The spacecraft from Earth is flying around Jupiter this morning. NASA scientists celebrated Juno's orbital entry last night. The spacecraft is the fastest orbiter ever built, but it still needed almost five years to travel almost two billion miles to Jupiter. Its mission is scheduled to last for about 20 months. With us now is Derek Pitts, chief astronomer, astronomer and director of the Fells Planetarium at Philadelphia's Franklin Institute. Thanks so much for joining us, Derek. Appreciate it. It's a pleasure it. to be here. Thank this you. This is really exciting news it is for really you exciting guys. News. Yes, the indeed. biggest, baddest planet. So, what do we expect to learn from this? So, Jupiter is a really wonderful place for us to understand how our solar system formed. It has uh, so much material left over from the early history of the solar system that we can use it as like a museum of the early history. So when we study Jupiter, it helps us learn about that, but it also helps us understand how gigantic gas giant planets like this one form, and it also helps us understand how planets in new star systems are forming also. Getting anywhere near this is a challenge in itself because of what Jupiter is made of. Yes, it's a really nasty place to be. It has the strongest magnetic field. It has the most intense radiation field. The radiation field there is 20 million times the radiation field here at Earth. So just imagine what that would do to the electronics, the sensitive electronics of a spacecraft like this. So the electronics have to be very, very well protected to make sure that they survive the number of orbits they have to do to get the science they need. All right, I'm geeking out a little bit about this yes, because yes. one yes, of Jupiter's okay. moons could support life, yes, right? Well, yes. do you know, look at this. Well, Europa is, as you say, one of the moons that could possibly support life. There's an icy crust underneath which is, uh, scientists believe is a liquid water ocean. Juno's not going to look at that, but what they're going to do is at the end of the mission, they're going to crash the spacecraft into Jupiter yes. to protect Europa from any possible microbiological hitchhikers that may have come along on the craft. But here's the thing, once they crash it, and by, and by the way, so on a clear night, you can see Jupiter with the naked eye. That's right, this on, summer, on, it's on, easily on, visible. On a clear night if you sure. walk outside, yes. not near a city where there's a lot of light pollution. No, you can even see it near a city also. Well, okay, with a, but with a telescope, even better, right? Yes, I mean, that's true. Just, yes. just tremendous. Of see, that's right. From, sorry. That's true. <laughs> we're all, we're all, we're we're all excited about this. I, I get it. But, but after it crashes, so uh, after this happens, there will be no NASA spacecraft orbiting an outer planet for 20 years? Yeah, that's true. And, and so what this points to is the fact that NASA and all of the researchers that have supported these missions over the last 30 to 40 years, they've all done a really fantastic job of taking us to every planet in the solar system. That's the realization here. Not that there's nothing coming after this, but that so much great work has been done to examine all the planets of the solar system. We haven't missed one planet with a spacecraft. I love the fact that there are three Lego figures on board that oh, I yes. read about. The Roman god Jupiter, his wife Juno, and then Galileo are all shown aboard here. But it's just really quite a feat for your engineers. I just want to give them a shout out for that because, I mean, we're all looking at the satellite, right? But my goodness. So I love the, uh, I love the, really I love the science that's coming back from this. We're going to learn so much about Jupiter, learn so much about solar system formation. But the thing that really gets me is that humans, people, designed all of this oh, fantastic yeah, equipment so to work at these incredibly nasty environments like Jupiter, where just all the conditions are the worst possible ones. Yep. And I always think, gosh, I, I can't get my car to start in the winter yet. <laughs> these people, me? these <laughs> engineers can create these I miraculous... I can't even get this to work. Pretty <laughs> impressive. So, so it is really spectacular. Thanks so much. This was a great pleasure to talk to you about this. Very it is exciting. really exciting. Yeah, keep a close watch on what's happening. It'll be great stuff coming out of this. Derek Pitts, thanks so much. Thank you.